Warning. If you're watching this video for the first time, please make sure that your parents look at it before you look at it. There's nothing to be afraid of, but there are things in this video that might scare younger children. So, we would like the parents to watch first, just to be safe. Thank you for understanding, and please enjoy the video. Hi kids, Mr. John here. Um, we've got a different kind of experience for you today. Today we're going to be reading The Airship. It's a book from the world of Teddy Ruxpin. Uh, now, you kids probably don't know who Teddy Ruxpin is, but your parents might. Teddy Ruxpin was a toy that could talk like a person, kind of. Um, if you've ever been to a Chuck E. Cheese or Circus Pizza or any of those places where they have pizza and, and arcade games and that's all they have kind of thing, like, uh, you, you'd see something what's called an animatronic. Uh, kids who have, have played a specific video game might know what I'm talking about, but the stuff in that video game is only in the video game. That stuff doesn't happen in real life. <clears throat> now this is Teddy Ruxpin. He's a teddy bear. Now, here's the thing. A while ago we talked about how to understand the difference between what's real and what's pretend. Now we can pretend Teddy's a real living being. Who can talk and sing and tell stories. Now when we decide to stop pretending we have to understand this is a toy not just a teddy bear because there's machinery inside him that will make his mouth move and his eyes blink and it will also have him play a story. Now my friend Teddy here is gonna read the story to us today. So I'm going to set the book down with him, and he is going to tell you the story. Come dream with me tonight. Hi, my name is Teddy Ruxpin. Can you and I be friends? I really enjoy talking to people. I would like you to meet some of my other friends, too. We're going to have lots of good times together. Now, listen to this sound. That sound reminds you to open the book to page one. Each time you hear that sound again, you turn a page, okay? There's a picture of Grubby. He's been a good friend of mine for a long time. Say hello to our new friend, Grubby. Oh, hi there. How are you, hmm? Remember, turn the page. Hey, Grubby. Do you remember this song? Yeah, I sure do. Your friend, your friend, is what I'd like to be. Your friend, your friend, cause I like you. Do you like me? Friendship is a lovely word, it makes a lovely sound. Friends are people that you like, and like to be around. Your friend, your friend, is what I'd like to be. Your friend, your friend, cause I like you, do you like me? 
Grubby and I had always wanted to go in search of new and wonderful things. Then, one day, we found an old treasure map. The treasure was supposed to be hidden in the far-off land of Grundo. And so we left our homeland of Rilonia and set out on our great adventure. Let's go to far-off places and search for treasures bright. Grundo was a long way from Rilonia, and after walking for many days, it didn't seem like we had made much progress. Teddy, my feet are getting sore. I must have stepped on every rock between Rilonia and here. You didn't tell me that adventure-seeking would be... This hard on my feet. <laughs> As you can see, Grubby does have a lot of feet to worry about. So we decided to camp there overnight. The next morning, Grubby's feet were better, and we continued on our journey. That was the day we met Newton Gimmick. Oh, <laughs> hello there. <laughs> uh, my name is Newton Gimmick, but everyone just calls me Gimmick. <laughs> I'm an inventor. Oh, yes, indeed. We discovered that Gimmick is a marvelous inventor. Oh, <laughs> I think marvelous inventor might be exaggerating. It would probably be sufficient to say, uh, uh, wonderful inventor. We also discovered that Gimmick is modest. We told Gimmick that we were on a journey to find a treasure. He said that one of his latest inventions might be very useful to us. Grubby and I were very interested. So we went to Gimmick's house to see just what this new invention was. Uh, yes. <laughs> Here it is. I call it an airship. Hmm. It looks like a boat. Oh, well, <laughs> as a matter of fact, it uh, did start out to be a boat, <laughs> but then I realized uh, I'm not very close to water. No, you're not very close to water. Yeah, it would be kind of good for a boat to be close to water. <laughs> Precisely. Uh, that was my exact conclusion. Uh, but then the idea hit me. <laughs> if a boat could float on water, it could also float on air. <laughs> if the air is hot, that is. Gimmick explained that by pumping hot air into a giant airbag under the ship, the hot air would rise and cause the ship to lift off the ground. It sounded logical, but somehow something didn't seem quite right. Teddy, uh, something doesn't seem quite right. As the airbag filled with hot air, the ship began to lift off the ground. Hey, Teddy, it's working. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, just as I expected. <laughs> uh, 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 make sure all the tether lines are tight. <laughs> the, everyone, get aboard. The ship lifted off the ground, and Newton Gimmick was delighted with his new invention. But somehow, something still didn't seem quite right. Do you know what it was? Teddy... Something still doesn't seem quite right. And I think I know what it is. Whoa! Hey, we're tipping over. Watch out, Grubby! The 
airship had turned upside down and crashed. Hmm. Apparently, uh, something wasn't uh, quite right. Oh, really? Maybe it was the hot airbag trying to get out from under the ship? Hmm. Uh, yes, uh, Grubby. <laughs> uh, that may be it. What Grubby said was correct. By any chance, did you expect what would happen? We discovered that the hot air should pull the ship up into the sky, not push it, which meant the ship would have to be suspended by ropes from the airbag. Indeed, Teddy. <laughs> yeah, uh, and once we had done that, uh, everything was all right. Well, almost all right, anyway. You see, we could make the ship go up and down okay, but we couldn't steer it very well. In fact, we got stuck in a tree. Suddenly, we heard a tiny voice. Just what are you doing in my tree? Uh, 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 huh? Uh, who said that? I said that, and I'll say it again. Just what are you doing in my tree? We discovered that the voice was coming from a tiny flying lady. Hey, would you look at that? What is it? I'm a wood sprite. Oh, uh, uh, no. There is no such thing as a wood sprite. Oh, no. And I suppose there's no such thing as a big bag of air stuck in my tree. But there it is, big as life. She was a real wood sprite. No bigger than a bird. And very pretty. Well, how about moving this ba... Oh. <laughs> do you really think I'm pretty? Oh, yes. I certainly do. <laughs> oh, aren't you sweet? <laughs> and who are you? Well, I'm Teddy Ruxpin, and this is Grubby, and this is Newton Gimmick. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? My name is Leota. <laughs> I'm pleased to meet you, and I'm sorry if we damaged your tree. Oh, that's all right. Is there anything I can do to help? Well, I'm not sure. You do understand the simple basics of aerodynamics, don't you? Uh, uh, uh huh? Leota showed us how to get down out of the tree. Then she gave us some ideas about steering the airship. Now, in order for your airship to move in any given direction, you must apply a force in the opposite direction, such as this large, manually driven propeller. Then you will have to know something about the effect of wind and various aspects of navigation. It's very simple. <laughs> well, it all sounded very confusing at first, but Leota had been flying all of her life and knew just what we should do to make the airship work. And so at last the airship flew perfectly. We said goodbye to Leota. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye. 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 Bye. Bye, everyone. And we were off on our way to Grundo in search of adventure and maybe to find a treasure. Grubby and I had met two new friends, Newton Gimmick and Leota the Wood Sprite. And I think we started to learn that it probably wouldn't matter too much if we ever found the treasure or not. The important thing would be the people we would meet and the things we would discover along the way. Come and discover the world lots of people we can meet lots of things to see so come and discover the world with me oh boy like what makes the leaves in autumn fall what irritates a honeybee why are some people six feet tall and others only three what makes the snow in winter fall how does a sheepdog see how come my favorite rubber ball can bounce into a tree? And sometimes when I trip and fall, why does the ground jump up at me? Huh, I never thought about that. Come and discover the world with me. There are lots of people we can meet, lots of things to see. So come and discover the world with me. that a snowflake knows just what shape it's gonna be? Now do you think a duck has toes? Why does a dog have fleas? Why are there freckles on my nose? What causes me to <gasps> sneeze? Where does a balloon go when you 
set it free. And overnight a mushroom grows, but it takes years to grow a tree. Huh. Don't ask me. Okay, come and discover the world with me. There are lots of people we can meet, lots of things to see. So come and discover the world with me. Come on, Teddy, let's go. <laughs> it's a world full of wonders and it's here. The world with me, my friend, my friend. <laughs> Come and discover the world with me, my friend, <laughs> my friend. Well, I hope you liked that story. I hope you guys can understand that Teddy is just a toy. And it's a toy that could scare some kids. But when I was a kid, and I got a Teddy Rux pin, he was always just fun for me. And there's nothing to be afraid of with a toy like this. Like I said, sometimes there's stories of pretend where there are things you're afraid of, but you have to remember they're not real. I hope you enjoyed our time today. Next time we'll look at another book, and it's going to be a longer book, much longer. So we're only going to read a part of it. And if you guys want me to read more of it, you'll have to tell me in the comments. But that's not until next time. So for this time, this is Mr. John saying, have a good day, and I will see you next time.